Hey everyone, it's Dying Demon, and welcome to a game called, uh, oh god, I always get your name wrong, uh, Hard Space Shipbreaker. It's right there, I should probably just read it. Um, so, they've come out with Act 1, I've been playing the living crap out of this. To give you an idea of what this game is, it's cut apart the ship, salvage it for money, pay off your debts. That is pretty much the, uh, that is pretty much the only way I can think to describe it. Um, I'm already done with the story they have released, but I've been having a lot of fun. Now, I need to let you know, I play on open shift, no drain, so I don't have to worry about oxygen or shift timers. But in standard play, a shift is 15 minutes long, and you have oxygen to keep up with, along with everything else. Um, it's fun. It is a lot of fun. But it's also addicting, and it can get a bit meh, but I thought I'd show it off. I've... I... I can't wait for act two and three i really can't and as part of their roadmap they said they kind of want to try importing uh like player made ships which i also want to tear down so let me give you an idea of what this is so when you start up and you start your game of course you have like your habitation modules where you're in that's not where you're actually going to start i'll you need to go play the game from there to see the rest of it or i might just start up a new game and show you just to see but like i am 1.1 billion dollars in debt and i have 140 links tokens as you tear down ships gather data to then sell off to them things like that um you get uh you get links tokens and you're trying to pay back links the 1.2 billion dollars in debt you owe them as you play you, your your equipment breaks you need to repair it um you also need you can also upgrade them to uh increase how they work um you, of course you get your messages and your you get the point uh you also get certification so as you do things like meeting these quotas it gives you higher and higher ranks i am currently a rank 10 red seal and i'm almost to a fellow and then of course we'll go to intermediate journey person practitioner advanced gold seal professional all the way up to grandmaster shipbreaker now what does a shipbreaker do well when you first start off you have different grades of ship uh, when you first start up you start up on these, which is what I'm actually going to show you. These are hazard level zero. There's not much to sell them from them. You're only going to get like two, like 725,000 out of these, uh, which is, and this one's 732. It's a light cargo expedient express mackerel, which is the ship type. So the, this is the ship type mackerel, which is what all these are. It is a light cargo ship. There's also station hoppers and another light cargo. And then there's the owner. So Lynx Corporation uh tiber transplanetary we're just gonna do this one so these ships are easy enough to disassemble or disassemble in the beginning they do get significantly more advanced i will be showing you those but first let me just show you the easy ones this is a 3d game made in unity um it's it's still early access well, not really early access as much as beta i guess i don't know how to describe it but basically, if you come up, the first thing you need to do is, of course, inspect your ship with, and look at it to see if you have any um, airlocks that are open or any compressor or pressurized compartments. Before I even go in the ship, I like to look around for anything on the outside I need to get rid of. And I deal with them. You have your multiple tools or your grappler, which is used to pull things, including you. Um, there's your tethers which you can connect to other things and they pull each other around you then have your laser cutter which has two modes your first mode is the stinger which is used to just you know burn let me see i'll grab you now if you look in the middle of your screen you'll see it says processor this means that this mother sucker right here the thruster cap is 183 kilograms cut level one meaning that i can cut it with my uh with my cut gun but it needs to go in the processor everything is color coded so like this right here in the background is a aluminum panel and it needs to go in the furnace this one is blue and it's the processor so just fire that sucker off i have a charge shot so i can do that um 
there aren't many uh hazards in the way of this ship it's the first one you ever really tear apart and it's there just for you to cut your teeth on now in a normal game a shift is 15 minutes long that's how long you have to tear it apart before your shift ends now it should be stated that it's not the end of the world if you don't um, your shift can continue on, but you need to balance it out. If you look in the very top of my screen, it shows the Persephone, Mackerel, Light Cargo, Ranks 1, 2, and, or Diamond 1, 2, and 3. That is your cut grade. That is, or not your cut grade, your salvage percentage. You want to aim for 3, but sometimes on certain shifts, like if you're doing standard mode instead of open like me, you might get through two shifts and realize that you have almost nothing left to salvage out of it and you have to make a decision is it worth it to go ahead and just get a new ship and screw this one over um i mentioned before that there's another cut mode this is the other cut mode and what it does is it cuts things like that now it will cut through just about anything of a high enough of a low enough cut level so you've got to be careful using it normally where i just came in there'd be an airlock and i will show you that on a more complicated build um but if i had just done that across that airlock section it would have cut my airlock in half and i would have lost my salvage all righty let's uh pulse you away so your objective is to salvage as much of the ship as possible um, for me, on a level, on my rank, my current rank of ship, as long as it's not a javelin, it takes me about 30 minutes to take apart a single ship. I am a bit distracted right now running a conversation, so I am taking a bit longer. Now, you don't start off with what I'm using, which are your tethers. Oh, look at the very top, by the way. If you look at the top, as these goes in, it shows you how much nanocarbon or how much material you're processing. And it'll show you how far along you are to completing your salvage on the ship. Each rank gives you something different. So if I uh, look at this, rank one will get me one link token. Two will get me two links token. Three will get me a free repair kit and three links token. You want to aim for three, but sometimes it is not financially worth it or you have destroyed too much of your salvage in the process to do it. It is finicky to say the least. That this is an overly simplified ship. Don't let it get to you thinking that it's this easy. It's not. And the biggest hurdle, I think, is getting used to flying in um, three dimensions. It's not as easy as it sounds, to be honest with you. It's not overly difficult. The game handles it really well, but it's still a pain in the butt. All right, let's go ahead and get these floor panels out. Um, cut points are what you want to use this on unless you absolutely want to cut another material. Um, I'm using a keyboard and mouse, so if I hit... T, I go into scanner mode, and it yellow is my cut points, orange or structural points, panel heavy is dark blue, and light blue is just a regular cuttable panel. I also have an upgrade that'll show me objects in the ship, but there's no objects in this ship, so. Let's go ahead and cut all these loose. You've also got to pay attention. If you look on the bottom right hand corner and I'm cutting, my cutter temperature is going up. As my temperature goes up, my uh, cutter can burst into flames doing damage to me. You've got to be careful and mindful of what you do. It also causes damage to your cutter. So you have to balance it out and figure out what the uh, cut speed should be. There are of course upgrades to lower your, uh, your rates. I don't have to cut you. You're going in the processor as well. Why waste the extra cuts? That beeping is to let you know that you're about to blow up, so don't use it. Do not ignore the blow up sounds. Now, with some ships, you can waste material. Um, sometimes it's just going to take so much time and effort to, uh, cut through a ship. It might just be better to toss all the material of that portion of the ship into like the processor or the, uh, furnace, depending on what material you have. I'll show you what I mean in a second.
All right, let's get all this uh, chunked out of here. Or not, you're still attached. What are you still attached to? Did I miss one? Shouldn't still be attached. What? Uh, so it kind of yells at you if it thinks you're gonna run into something and he freaks out Now when your materials get so close they automatically get sucked into your little bays here um, Be very mindful of that if you don't want something to go into your uh um, if you don't want something to go into your furnace, make sure it does not cross that yellow line on any point. Once you do, it starts getting sucked in. And there's nothing you can do to stop it. I mean, you could try if it's small enough, but the bigger stuff, it's made its point decision. It's going in. Um, You do have the ability to, of course, pull things around and make it work. But be mindful of its weight. It's very important to look at the... Uh, the weight of an object because sometimes you'll end up trying to pull something and it'll just fling your butt sideways or suck you into it or crush you i just destroyed a bunch of nanocarbon i was too busy running my mouth not paying attention so that's a good thing to show you if you look at the top there's now a red bar on the right hand side you do not want to let that cross over any of your milestones if it does then you cannot claim that milestone. You've already damaged too much of the ship. Like I said, this is a pretty easy build. I'm eight minutes in and I'm already almost done building it. Or, hello, what? Get your sorry self over there. There's also these things, they're processor, but like I said, you can't really cut them off. I don't have a high enough cut level or demolition tools to get rid of it yet, so it's considered a loss. And you can usually lose things like that. One or two are not going to hurt you. It's all about balancing your profits. There we go. As you can see, they're just flying in now, and I now got three. At this point, I could quit the build, but I'm not going to because I still have material here I want to toss in. Oh, and be careful. Um, You will get sucked into these, and you will be processed, and you will die, and it will cost your debt to go higher as they clone you a new body. Go on, get in there. <laughs> there we go. And that should push us the rest of the way over. As you can see, it might be going slow, but it's over the yellow. So now it will coast in no matter what. It will be pulled in. And you'll know when it reaches the barrier because then its physics decide to go nuts. See, that time I should have tossed it in the uh, um, that thing because I would have gotten more money out of it or more uh, completion. But it says I'm missing something. I don't know what I'm missing. I think I've tossed everything in. Oh, well. All right, break, 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 break. Whoo. Sticker unlock jacked me up, really. Also, I recommend if you if you have no tethers left, but you're done with the ship, don't buy more. The game will just give you more to start of your next shift. Alrighty, so as you can see, I destroyed 300 kilograms of nanocarbon, etc., etc. I have made 678,000 on that teardown, and it got me another 136 mastery points out of 40,000. Now we're going to try a bigger ship. One that uh, 
by the way fees daily you accure fees for rental fees you have the ability to build up a high enough level and enough gear and points that you can actually buy your gear to lower your rental fees down to nothing and then you're just uh yeah you're just paying off on your debt but you always want to try and earn enough every day to cover your fees to your fee totals I've reached a velocity of at least 20 meters per second. Cool. Let's place that sticker on my grapple. There we go. Now, let's see. How's my equipment looking? It's all still in pretty good shape. Let's go to start shift. We're going to view the ship catalog and choose a new one. So... Of these, there's two here that are obscenely difficult to go through. They take an hour plus for me to get through. And I don't know if I have enough record time for that. So, but if you look at them, this one's worth basically 4.9 million. I'm pretty certain I can get this one to, uh, um, I'm pretty certain I can get about six to seven million out of it. Same for this one. These two are worth significantly less but they're a lot smaller and tear down time takes nowhere near as long. For the sake of this video, I will do one of these, but if you want to see me do a tear down on one of these, just leave a comment or a, uh, or, you know, just engage with the video and I'll come back to it. So let's do, uh, this is worth more, but you're a station hopper and I kind of want to just tear you down for the heck of it. So as your rank goes up, you get higher and higher hazards. Hazards are important to pay attention to. Um, because they will increase the difficulty of the build. Like right now, I'm getting 25, then 49, then 123 links tokens, plus a freight repair kit. And it's worth millions. As you get higher up, you'll also face other such hazards, such as if you look at this, you can see danger appear over this glass. That's because it's pressurized. And I can see that by getting closer, let's slow down with my break and I'll hit T. Um, the entire main compartment and the airlock is pressurized, including engineering. I need to get rid of that pressure. On top of that, there's a lot more things to cut off, as you can see, and a lot more things to get damaged. So my goal to begin with is always secure the outside. And we're just going to do some cuts here and there, and you'll probably see the... Depending on how, how ornery I feel during the editing sequence, you might just see some jump cuts. Okay, so that's all the outside bits of fun. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm allowed. Get rid of this. And let's see. Let's... Are you, uh... Yeah, you're in a cell that's hooked in on the outside. Let's... All right, let's get inside real quick. Whoops. Airlock pressure levels dropping. Alrighty. Airlock pressure levels increasing. And here we are in the ship. First things first. I don't need it, but let me go ahead and grab this health kit. Now, while you're in here, you notice there's a bunch of things that I can grab. These are ne necessary to make your profit. It's the main reason why you're in here. Um, let's see. Let me make sure all the doors are open so that I can depressurize this entire area. Ah, data drive. These are things you want to collect. Ah, has audio. Got a crack in your mask or Branded gear. It's a cut above the rest. Lynx is a mega corporation, by the way, that basically owns anything and everything. Um, let's see. Um, why are y'all sparking? Okay, so you only have door access on the other side, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so we're going to have to decompress this area. Not really decompress it as much as join it. And now I have access to the engine room. 
Careful of these, they'll shock the crap out of you if you damage one. Let's disengage the thruster. Now, let's drain all the oxygen out of this place using an atmospheric regulator. And then I can just cycle you back open. Your lung pressure levels dropping. With that, we now have the ability to start our cuts. Um, I prefer to take the floors out first so I can remove from the bottom and toss directly in the barge. But you know, you might have your own way of wanting to do it. All right. Now comes your money making process. These you really don't have to do, but I do them because they're worth the. Uh, um, they're worth uh, stickers and stuff and achievements and I'm pretty certain in the old version of the game before the storyline It's how you also got a uh, um, Certification As you can also see in the top it is a lot harder to get your certification now This is your money maker and your certification. It's Gear and stuff that you rip out of this out of this uh, transport The most dangerous and most necessary part of all this is the nuclear reactor in it. Now, I've only got class one reactors unlocked. I don't know the difference between a class one and a class two. I've not been that far in the game. Hopefully it's something that I can't handle, but we'll see whenever I get to it, right? There we go. I have uh, made my mistakes, especially with them javelins of big ships and blowing up their fuel tanks and nuclear reactors because all it takes is one straight cut and you've blown it all up. Okay, so let's go ahead and cut off the roof. Actually, just because they're practically worthless, but they're really not worth even doing this for, but there is a sticker that is involved with them, so I'm doing it. Never get between a gamer and their collectibles, right? Whew, almost overheated that one. All right. Let's push you up and out. You're aluminum. Okay. I swore I thought you were nanocarbon, but what do I know? about you you are nanocarbon get in there no 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 you don't get to go off into space There, I'll get in there. Okay, main compartment is handled. Let's get this uh, thruster out. Now, your thrusters, your <coughs> nacelles, and your uh, nuclear reactor are big money makers. You do not want to lose them. Let's get the thruster cap off. Your processor item. Okay, now take a look at this thruster. Never I pull it out, just how much it's worth. Worth. Come on. So it's a 227 class one thruster. Now watch my bar at the top. Boom. That is worth a lot. Okay, so now here comes the hard part. I need to access the crawl spaces so I can cut the sides off to disengage the fuel tanks. So that you can see right here. Um, one problem, I don't see a secondary crawl space access. 
What? When did you get over there? All right, whenever this happens, we have to do things in an order that I normally don't do them in. I do the captain's, I do the cabin last, um, but because of the way this is done, I'm gonna do it first. First things first, we cut you off. Thing is, I think the reactor is up front as well, so you might be able to get to see that sooner than later. Uh, coolant tank, coolant tank, electrical terminal. Power cell. And where's my reactor? I don't know why it just did that. Well, it's freaking out like that's reactors nearby. I just might be overlooking it. Okay, so let's let's get in here. So this is too heavy to move with my cut tool. I mean my grapple. So we'll just take it and tether it. Tethers are ex exceptionally stronger than your tool. And kill it all right let's get these coolant tanks out the way first gently does it so the physics in this game are a little bit wonky a little thing like a coolant tank can actually drag a whole ship once it's disengaged it acts like its own free-floating entity and for some reason it has far more pressure effect than a uh Oh, this is dangerous. There we go. Okay. All right, you're set for now. Get the hell away. Thank you. We'll pop you off. And let's be gentle with this. that away Woo, that was close now let's pull these out Valuable. by the way i've been doing this tear down for 19 minutes and i'm still not done but i am significantly more on the money than i was uh for the other build they do take a lot longer the further in you get I see the reactor is over there. Two as well. Is there anything else in here? Now, for those of you who don't know, who do play this game on the regular, you can pop off these. Do I? Hell no. Not worth my time. You get in there. This is a mix of furnace and, uh, um, processor, but I don't care. All right, let's get you out the way. Once you remove all the power cells, the ship loses power. Your airlock stop working. Your computer console stop working. Now, if you look at my ship, I'm losing a lot of destroyed material, but I'm fine with that. 
money wise, I think I get more for the nano carbon than I do for the aluminum. Okay, let's uh I hate being this close to the reactor doing what I'm doing. Aha, there's fuel cell one. Let's make sure not to burn that. <laughs> so in the beginning, fuel cells can't be disengaged. You can just pull them and they have no gas. They won't explode. But at higher fuel I and mean, higher hazard levels, you can blow yourself up. Always flush your valves. This pulls the fuel out of the nacelle, pushes it into the tank and then dis disengages the tank. So now that we've disengaged all this, let's get this away from the reactor and pull our reactor. Your reactor is on average the single most expensive component on your ship. Damaging that will almost certainly cost you a rank three just by losing that one item. And it will cost you a huge chunk of your salvage of your money earned. Hey, now another thing to know about this is you need to plan your pull. Um, no, most of the time you can try and pull a reactor like this is an easy pull. I can just grab it, but sometimes it's in weird locations and you need to clear out all the debris first. I take it out and you can see I have a timer. If I don't get that in the bar before the timer expires, it blows up. You see how much that just gave me? You see how much that just gave me? A lot. Alrighty, let's pull off this, uh, let's pull this fuel tank out. Ooh, gently. Get down there. And let's cut this nacelle loose. All right, then we're just going to take the nacelle and tether it on down. Then take this section and tether it on in. Okay, now let's get the other side done. Twenty-five minutes into this build, we are approaching the end of what would be a second shift on standard mode. You want to try having rank three before then, or you know, you get the point. Oh yeah, airlocks. And my fuel levels are critical. I guess I need to take care of that. And now my cutter's damaged. Let's. Get this loose first. Try to make sure that when you're aiming your laser and you're cutting, you're cutting at an angle that will not intersect with your, uh, um, with like a burnable material because you do not want to end up accidentally, uh, blowing up your ship. Okay, let's get back. That way I can go ahead and. Oh! I slammed into you hard. Holy crap. That's what happens when you rush. By the way, you have to pay into your debt to get these things. Just remember that. Let's finish cutting this out. I'll take care of that. Let's uh, purge you. And then we'll 
gently remove you from the ship so you don't blow nothing up and fire you into oblivion <laughs> and then cut that that'll loosen you up let's put you through And we'll pull that in. Now, the rest of this should be removable at this point. I just gotta go through the engine room stuff. Oh yeah, I forgot about your electrical junction boxes in here. You have a lot. I'll electrocute the crap out of myself if I'm not careful. Are you still connected? You shouldn't be. I just pushed you out. Hold on. You should not still be connected. Oh, that's why. There we go. Now you come off. Let's just yank you on in. Now let's pull out everything in this room. At this point, I'm approaching the end of the next shift. I, if I didn't have this build done at this point, I'd have to wait. Do I really want a third shift or should I sell everything and call it quits? So right now I'd be okay, except that I don't have all these boxes pulled and I'm not gonna make rank three until I shove this, uh, um, this entire framework into the uh, smelter. And that's going to take longer than the remaining there. Okay. At this point, my shift would end in about 10 seconds and I'd be good. I'm done. I could sell the rest of this off and not give a crap. But since I have unlimited shift, we're not going to waste it. I always aim to have my shift done in two shifts on a uh, ship like this, if you're playing standard, and if it's a javelin within three ships, maybe four, because javelins are a bit big and you can make a huge lump sum off them suckers. So, hey, where the hell are you pulling? Go that way. Just in case you try to go the wrong way, I'll waste a few tethers. And that'll take the rest of it for me. And done. Let's see how we did turn everything in and uh, be good. So we made 3.2 million out of that. I am now a fellow. I now get a handheld utility upgrade and a laser cutter upgrade available to me. Woohoo! 
We've finally done it. After enthusiastic lobbying negotiations, the Jovian Safety Commission has given us to go ahead on linked brand explosives. The cutters who were keen to work with on their explosive ticket can now acquire the demolition charge license from their equipment menu of the HAB interface. Instructions are available in all languages except Esperanto. Happy cutting. So I needed 516 million to live. I made 3.2 million and my debt went down. And I now have new messages. Let's recover the data. You get paid for the data, by the way. Like, see, my coins went up by 100. <laughs> From Mortimer Corny, Solar Day statutory holiday canceled. Many friend and value coworkers. Just to find out that all Lynx employees, exec excluding the executive team, are expected to report to work on Solar Day this year. What an exciting way to celebrate and honor the true lifeblood of our solar system. Let's do our sun proud and continue our pursuit of, of pushing human humankind deeper into the galaxy one additional day this year. Exciting times indeed, your pal Morty. Mortimer Corny, Communications Director, Internal Communications of Lynx. You asshole. Lynx is garbage, by the way. They are a horrific company that owns everything about you. Thank you, everyone, for coming on in. And uh, if you have any more interest in this, let me know, and I'll be more than happy to make more episodes. Other than that, this has been Dying Demon, and I'll see y'all later. Bye!